Hello guys, this is a new video of History Learning. I am Alice and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will talk about a beautiful country called Venezuela, with its natural charms, its hospitality, its good vibes, its rich history, how it came to be called Saudi Venezuela, and what events have happened in the last two decades for Venezuela to be in conditions never seen in its history. Come to know a little about the history of Venezuela. Venezuela is a country located in South America, specifically in the north, making coast with the Caribbean Sea. In this way, Venezuelans all are so considered partly Caribbean. The history of Venezuela begins from the Pacunan era, about 30,000 years ago, when the entire area of the Amazonas, the Andes and the Caribbean coast began to be populated. Until before the arrival of Columbus, the most important tribes were the Timoto Cuicas, located in the Andes, the Caribes, who previously distributed themselves in the east and center of the country, but due to conflicts acquired the north coast and spread to the Antilles. The Arawakos who settled in what is now the Amazonia state. These ethnic groups were characterized by the development of instruments to hunt large animals as well as development of fishing and navigation. Venezuela was the first scene of the third column trip on August 1st, 1498 in the area of the Orinoco River, the first time that the Spanish set foot on continental soil since their first two trips were in the Caribbean islands. After this, the Spanish create province in order to strengthen their dominion over these territories such as Margarita, Venezuela, Trinidad, among others. In 1528, Carlos I gave a temporary lease to the Wilson family and the Fugger family which gave way to the creation of Klein Benedict, a German governorate in Venezuela. After a short time, it was again in the hands of the Spanish, while in the following centuries it continued to colonize and take advantage of Venezuela's resources and spread food to Europe. After Venezuela was alternately governed by the royal audience of Santo Domingo and the Santa Fe de Bogota, it was decided to create a single autonomous entity to create the general captaincy of Venezuela in 1777. This will take shape with the creation of the royal audience of Caracas in 1786. In the 19th century, as a result of various events such as the Napoleonic Wars, the introduction of the enlistment, the independence of the United States, the desire for an independent territory from the metropolis of Spain inspired the rise of the population to achieve its independence and this was at the hands of Simón Bolívar. This independence was achieved on April 19, 1810, giving Venezuela part of the Great Colombia. Greater Colombia relied largely on the Nelson territories to join this confederation, but internal strife and economic crisis caused Greater Colombia to separate and Venezuela separate from Greater Colombia in November 1829. After the separation of Venezuela from the Great Colombia and the seat from power of Simón Bolívar, Venezuela began to have a number of caudillos throughout the 19th century, rolling with a heavy hand such as Diego Bautista Urbaneja, swarmed in April 1831, Tadeo Monagas in 1847, Antonio Guzmán Blanco in 1870, among others. Also, in this century, different civil and political conflicts occur, such as an attack on Congress in 1848, 
the March Revolution of 1858, the Federal War, the Blue Revolution of 1867, and the April Revolution of 1870. At the turn of the 20th century, the Republic of Venezuela was submerged in dictatorships and in an economy based on agriculture and a very difficult standard of living, causing a migration of the population from the countryside to the cities in the 1930s. From 1935, the country began to have military governments that also some were populist and democratic, others had a stronger character, beginning these years with the general Eleazar López Contreras, then Isaías Medina in 1841, then a curreta was carried out to hands of Marcos Pérez Jiménez, Luis Llovera Páez, and Carlos Delgado Chalbaut. Starting in the 1950s, it is considered the pirate of the economic boom in Venezuela that was based on oil production reaching from 1.8 million barrels per day to 2.77 million barrels per day, and growing even more in the following years, giving Venezuela the status of one of the fastest growing nations in Latin America and leaving the western hemisphere above powers like the United States and the United Kingdom. The economic income and oil for the Venezuelan population was so evident that it is said that any Venezuelan could go to Miami and buy anything they want. The economic lever had given prosperity to the Venezuelan economy, promoting sustainable infrastructure, better quality of life, and with an efficient system. For that time, Venezuela was emerging as one of the best economies in the world, above European countries. The oil crisis caused the price of oil to rise suddenly from 3 to 12, becoming known as Saudi Venezuela as it had many economic inputs. Beginning in the 1980s, there was a drop in the Venezuelan economy, as the government began to get into debt rapidly, and in addition to the fact that corruption grew disproportionately, it led to an economic crisis, and all this reached such a point. In 1989, the Caracaso occurs leading to a series of large protests and of moments never seen in Venezuela leading Hugo Chavez and a group of military personnel to promote a coup d'etat in 1992, resulting in failure. Although this event did not prevent this character from becoming myth and received strength, and later in 1989 swore in as president of Venezuela, promulgating a new constitution, changing the name of the country to the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. During this movement, Hugo Chavez went to implement a socialism of the 21st century, also in the beginning the population did not agree, and with social protest a coup d'etat took place, also it only lasted three days and was put back there was Chavez in the presidency. In the following years, Hugo Chavez continued to be the president of Venezuela, implementing a socialist model more similar to the Cuban communist that he present before becoming president. Despite all this, Venezuela still had an acceptable standard of living, taking precedence in the different international events. It had finalists in beauty events, 
and a considerably acceptable level of development, although it was no longer with the same force as with the boom of the petroleum. In 2013, Hugo Chavez dies from a cancer, and the vice president, Nicolás Maduro, had to release him. And since that time, Venezuela has had its worst years in all of history, reaching inflation of 2 million percent, a crime like never before. At this time, this dictatorship that does not release power in any way produced one of the largest humanitarian crises of the modern era. And today, they have almost 6 million asylees around the world. But Venezuelans still hope that the Nicolás Maduro dictatorship will one day disappear and this prosperity return in this country. Thank you all for watching my video. I hope you like it. Don't forget to share this video and click like and see you in the next video. Goodbye.